I am so excited today. We have Lori Barkas is back with us. She is a family attorney. She's licensed in Colorado and Florida. Um, just so you know that. Now, each state has their own laws and their own rules. And then sometimes counties have their different things too. So we can't speak to um, everything everywhere, but we can give you general ideas of what to look out for and what to watch for. Lori, I am so excited, is going to be talking about fear and manipulation and listening to or how not to listen um, to what your soon-to-be ex is telling you. So Lori, if you want to introduce yourself a little bit more, I'm I'm found it's so much better for speakers to introduce themselves, but please, uh, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Robin. And I'll do a brief introduction. Lori Barkis, family law attorney. I am the founder and owner of Sustainable Family Solutions. We are a Florida and Colorado based law firm. And our primary objective is to help women have a successful divorce. Our team is dedicated to helping empower women and get our clients through this process to get the best result we can in the most efficient manner. And I am I am really excited about this topic. I know that sounds weird because we're going to talk about fear and fear is not fear is not a fun thing. It's what we avoid. But we've got we've got some great material that I think will really touch a chord with a lot of you because it's something I've seen a lot. So just just jumping right in, I want to give you a couple scenarios that I see a lot that you might be sitting there feeling like this is me, this is what I'm going through. And if nothing else, this will show you you're, you're not alone. And here's what it is. There's a divorce on the horizon that one of you has decided. Your husband says to you, don't talk to a lawyer. I'm telling you not to talk to a lawyer. That's going to mess up the whole process. We're going to go to a mediator. I'm going to be totally fair. And we're going to reach an agreement. Or, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, if if a red flag isn't going up, it's there. Tap into your intuition. We're women. We always know. And we'll talk about why there's a red flag with that. And it's not because mediation is bad. I'm a fan of mediation when it's used right. And that's not the way to do it. And the other one is, if you go to a lawyer, you're going to get nothing. I'm going to destroy the business. I'm going to hide everything. I'm not going to get anything. I talked to a lawyer and that lawyer told me that you don't get anything because you were a bad spouse or you didn't contribute or whatever comes out after that. So again, if you're sitting there thinking this resonates, you're not alone. And you're also, this isn't you. This is not a you thing. This is not something you've caused. Yeah. And I, I hear this all the time and it's like, no, 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 really that it, they have to go by the law. It's, I don't care what he says. Yeah, so this is a great subject, Lori. What else do you have for us? Absolutely, Robin. And and Robin, Robin's absolutely right. All st all states have laws about how property is divided, how things like maintenance or alimony or child support are decided. And what happens a lot of times in those two scenarios, the husband did get legal advice. Husband went out there and knows that there's a lot of things that he would be responsible for that he does not want to be responsible for. So what he's trying to do is get an agreement that says, no, I don't have to pay you that. No, that pension really is mine. No, I don't have to pay child support. That's not fair. You shouldn't get alimony. I don't, I don't care that you haven't worked in 30 years. You can go out and get a job tomorrow and it would be high paying. You're very smart. You're very capable. Um, and you might be those things, but nobody re-enters the workforce that quickly and, and it doesn't work that way. And so those are, those are some of the things that come about and where fear comes in a lot of times, what, what I find, and Robin and I were talking about this. I know, I know she sees this too, is that women are so afraid to do anything other than go along. And I think for a lot of women, for the entirety, entirety of the marriage, or perhaps the entirety of your life, you've done that. You've been the appeaser, you've been the placator, you've been the one who made nice and made everything work. And maybe you're even feeling like you're walking on eggshells 
So now that feeling is so comfortable and so familiar that it's like, well, I better walk on eggshells because that's the only way he's going to be nice. That's the only way I'm going to get anything. If, if not, I'm going to have to deal with, with the fear, with what happens now, how uncomfortable I'm going to feel because I'm saying no to that for the first time. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of it's the fear and the anger and the, the reaction, or maybe I should just say the reaction of what the soon to be ex is, is going to do or say, because you've lived with that for so many years. And now, you, you know, you're in the middle of this divorce and you think because he says, or they say, um, that I'll treat you fairly, or you can't get this, or or this is the way it's going to be. You follow along, and you really, really shouldn't do that, <laughs> right, not, Lori? No, and not not blindly, because again, if, if somebody really wants to be fair, they want an agreement that you both understand. And I, I, I am a mediator by training. I've mediated. I've had cases where both parties sit there and sometimes they go to a, they go to an accountant or they go, they go to their financial professional and they go over the finances. So both people understand, yes, this is fair. And I've also seen things where somebody says, as Robin just said, this is what I say is fair. So you have to do it because I'm right. The second scenario the biggest problem is even if they were, you would never feel comfortable with it because you don't mm -hmm. know. And that's why, again, I'm a big fan of mediation. It can work in a lot of cases when, when both people are using the process right. But I also, my number one piece of advice, if you're going through divorce, get a consultation and not free advice for 20 minutes or not, not, not free advice from whoever may or may not be representing you in a firm somebody who's going to get information, sit down and think, analyze your case, discuss with you. Here's the strengths and weaknesses. Here's the path forward. Here's what this should look like. That is the information you need for whatever you decide to do. That will help you feel a lot less fair, uh, a lot less fear. Yeah. And they sound so much alike, but yeah, it will, it, it will feel a lot more fair to you because it will reduce that fear of, oh, I don't know, what can I do? And Robbie, so look let's at talk a little bit about the, the free consults, because you and I just touched on this a little bit before this meeting. And free consults aren't bad, except they cannot, the, the attorney cannot go into detail and tell you anything specific because if, um, or maybe I should say an attorney that really wants to help you out, right? They want to get to know you and find the specifics, but legally, they can't give you any legal advice without you being their client. Am I correct in that, Lori? I'm, I'm, I think you need to clarify that a little bit. You, you, you are. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tweak it a little bit because they can somewhat give you legal advice. What's going to happen is you're getting very general legal advice, especially if it's a short consultation and that attorney has done no preparation before. And let's face it, nobody can work for free. So the person that's doing that free consultation can't gather information, can't review a court file, can't review information that you provide because otherwise they can't run a business. So they're going on very general information that may or may not apply. So they'll tell you things like, oh, you're entitled to half the assets, or yeah, you're entitled to alimony, or, 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 you're, or this is how child support would work. They're not really talking about your specific situation. And in my opinion, I would imagine they're more focused on selling you, on, on bringing you in as a client, rather than what, what information they are, they are absolutely providing. And I know I get it. You know, it's a lawyer telling you, you shouldn't get information for free. I'm sure that does not sound comfortable. I'm sure there's skepticism of that. I get that. I totally respect that. But again, I would just caution you, make sure you get the actual right advice and calling six lawyers for six free consultations. You're just going to be more confused and probably even more scared than when you started or, and please don't do this, going into forums on the internet and asking strangers who don't have law degrees, what should I do here? I, I see a lot of that and it just makes me shake my head and it concerns me for people 
because you're going to get people are, are well-meaning, but they don't know you and they don't know the law. They went through it once and they think this is how it goes for everybody. And I don't mean to disparage that, but I, I don't, I, I don't tell people how to do surgery. I, I don't, I don't dish out financial advice on products. I will not try to cut your hair. Believe me, I'll never try to paint your nails. You wouldn't want to see what happens if I do. I stay in my lane. And when people do that, they're not giving you the advice and also the strategy you need. It's not just, oh, what, what am I entitled to? How am I going to do this? I have an angry husband who said he'll destroy me if I do this. How do I go forward? The internet's not going to give you those answers and neither will a free conversation. How do you go forward? How, when, you know, when you're facing divorce, you know, it may or may not have filed yet, but, but your, your soon to be ex is, is telling you, I will tell you what you're going to get. You aren't, you know, you're not entitled, entitled to this. I'm not going to do this. How, how do you deal with that? Very strategically. And what I mean by that is you don't want to get overly aggressive and just bulldoze your way in. And I know we've talked about this and it's a whole nother, whole nother talk about aggressive attorneys. And that's tempting. Let me get the most aggressive person because he's aggressive. He's mean. I'm scared. I want that aggressive person to protect me. That could be disastrous here because you want it. You want somebody who can stand up for you, but you want to tread carefully. That's why, again, you really want the person to understand the situation. You know your spouse so much better than I do. But when we meet and when you answer my questions and you answer my intake, I understand what we're dealing with. So I want to craft that strategy. And the high level concept of that is I want to figure out what there is, what, yeah, what, what you should get if we went to court and also look at, okay, is this somewhere that we do want to settle? Because we might, not because we're scared, but because the reality is the law can't protect you against everything. So, you know, your spouse who's like, I am going to stop working and I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave the country. I'm going to this, I'm going to that. A lot of that may be just talk. Some of that we may want to look at and say, okay, well, maybe you should have this, but if you get this, are you okay? And what can we add to that? Is this person okay paying for college, paying for kids' expenses? Can we negotiate that? Can we figure out something where he feels you won? I'm sorry, he feels he won. You know you didn't lose and you're okay with it where we've made it his idea still he still has that control, but we still protected you. And no, we don't take the bottom line offer that won't do that. So that's that's where strategy really comes in, that you can't be too aggressive. You can't be too passive. You don't want the person and, and nothing against collaborative. Collaborative is great in a lot of situations. It may or may not work for somebody who's just determined to bulldoze over the other person. Again, I'm collaboratively trained and I've seen that and it concerns me. You want the person who's going to say, look, I'll put all the options on the table, but I want to go for what can work for you. I'm not, I'm not a pacifist, but I'm not too aggressive, but I'm, I'm right there and I'm willing to walk this path with you. Yeah, because sometimes, you know, if you push and push and, and don't negotiate, um, nobody wins, right? right? I, I, I mean, you know, going to trial and spending hours and hours in trial fighting. And you know what? Judges don't want to hear it. They really don't. And, and I know a lot of um, some spouses, they just want to go to court. And it's like, I don't care. I'm going to like fight this to the, to the end. And it's like, but why? Why not negotiate just a little bit? But I do understand that fear, right? Um, of course. Yeah, if anyone watching, if you have any questions, just put them in the chat, um, either on Zoom or on Facebook, and I will be watching that, okay? And then we'll get your questions answered, um, even as we go along, okay? All Definitely. Right. Questions are always welcome. And one other thing I want to kind of point out in that is you don't want a strategy that's beyond your comfort level. And I think that's why sometimes people will get a very aggressive lawyer whose personality is so not theirs. And they're, they don't want, they don't want to fight this to the end. They just, they don't have it in them. And that's okay. That is not a weakness. It's, it's actually a strength of knowing that. 
So you want to make sure that your lawyer's ambition is, is, is matched to your own in that, again, you're not going to just give up and do something that's not going to work for you, that's not going to allow you to have a future, but you don't always have to fight for everything. There might be a middle ground that's better for you so that you can be done and you don't have the toll of litigation because a case that goes on for a year or more, it's going to take a toll on you mentally, emotionally, and physically. You know, it's funny you said that because I was just thinking about that because you know, it's not only the time, right? And it, it, but it's the ongoing heartache. It's the ongoing emotional roller coaster that you're going through that the whole family is going through. Um, it, it's, it, and you're right, it's mental, um, which can affect your physical, which can affect every single aspect of your life. So is it worth it? Is it worth dragging this out and having a fight for a year or two years going back and forth? Maybe not. <laughs> There might, yeah, there might be a better middle, there might be a better middle ground that doesn't involve settling for less than, less than what you need, which a lot of times, a lot of this battle is usually over retirement. So this might strike a chord too. You have a spouse, um, maybe this person was, was military. I see a lot of those cases. Um, maybe, maybe they, they worked in law enforcement, uh, maybe they have a pension or they have a retirement account and they're getting possessive and saying, well, this is my money. The reality is the law, depending on how long you've been married, but especially in a long, long marriage is going to say, no, it belongs equally to both of you. It, it doesn't, it doesn't matter that one was in the line of duty and one was home taking care of the kids, which is a different line of duty. So I've seen people who say, well, he said, I can't touch his retirement, but they don't understand how much that benefit is worth or they don't have a plan. Maybe you're in your fifties, mid fifties, and it's like, okay, well, I'm going to make it on my own. Not without that retirement you want. And this is something Robin can really speak to about why that would be so detrimental. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, because when you're, when you're re-entering the workforce or entering it for the first time, when you're in your late, your, your late forties and your fifties, you will never ever make up that time, that money, okay? So as a partner, you were a partner in that marriage. You both decided that maybe you stayed home or you worked, maybe you were the breadwinner and he stayed home. Whatever it is, you guys decided as partners that this, you were gonna create your family that way, right? Or maybe you both worked and that's okay but maybe one of you had the higher income, higher, um, you know, the higher retirement fund. Well, we need to look at that whole thing because statistically, women are now living till their 80s and their 90s and some into their 100s. How are you going to pay to live, right? Pay yourself to live from that, I'll just say 65 or 67 to that 90. Don't throw away that the assets that you both have um, accumulated throughout these years. Don't throw it away. It's going to hurt you in the long run. And I'm not going to say that you absolutely have to, like Lori said, like you absolutely have to get 50% of, of every single thing. Well, negotiate a little bit. And it's doable because you will never make up those retirement benefits. And no, you cannot live, um, well, you won't live well on Social Security, okay? Just, you have to have something else, right? Absolutely. It's an excellent point. And, and Billy, I just saw a comment come in uh, about a lawyer not letting you speak at mediation and I do want to speak to that. That kind of goes to what I was talking about um, with sometimes hiring the person that's not a good fit because maybe they weren't vetted. Maybe, maybe there was some fear in the decision, whatever it may be. The person that you work with, you absolutely have to be able to speak to. And, and I've had this situation. I've had people tell me that they hired somebody who was so aggressive. They didn't know what was going on. They were afraid to talk. They were afraid to reach out to this person. Either they didn't hear back from this lawyer 
which is a very, sadly, a very common thing that seems to happen, or they did not feel comfortable talking to this person, that's, that's not okay, especially not at mediation. In court has its own set of rules. It's very different. You, you can't walk into court and just say whatever you want to say. But that's that's a totally different thing. Mediation should be your opportunity to speak about what you want. I mean, there might be time limitations around it. I get that. But a lawyer should not, in my opinion, tell you that you're not allowed to talk. And if if you feel that you're not allowed to speak, then then there's something that's not comfortable about that. Because the two of you, the one person that absolutely has to be on your side during this process is your attorney. And that might mean you, you might hear something you don't want to hear. I mean, I I believe in honesty with my clients. And I, I say that even in my intake, we're going to have hard conversations. I may tell you, hey, we can't do that. Or you know what? I, 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 I don't like what you're doing here. I would like you to take a different approach. But you need to know that I'm on your side 100% of the time. So I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that happen. That really is... That really is unfortunate, and I'm sure that did not help, and I'm sure that either cr created a bad outcome that I think I saw in there, or it certainly would would not make anybody feel like I got a great outcome when when you didn't feel heard or respected in the process. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't. She even told me not to uh, read it. I couldn't even read it. Okay. Well, that's um. That that doesn't that certainly doesn't sound right to me. I mean, we weren't there. We're not going to be able to get into the specifics of it. But I would be very concerned about that uh, because uh, nobody should sign an agreement. I mean, it's a good point to bring up. Uh, nobody should sign an agreement that they did not read or do not understand. And if there's a lawyer there, the lawyer should be answering questions about it. And I know that time limitations sometimes come up, and people will say, "Well, if we don't sign this, they're going to leave." Um, right. That's and, what she did. Yeah, I, I think that that happens a lot. I I have what what people may disagree with. I have a kind of an unorthodox view. To me, if somebody's going to leave, they're going to leave. But I'm not going to have that be a pressure tactic. And yeah, it's true. You might have mediated all day. Maybe it's even a long mediation. I've had some twelve plus hour mediations where it's like sign or they leave, and it's like no, no, I'm not. I'm I, I'm not letting a client sign unless I've read and I know the client's read. So. I am sorry that happened. That's um that's certainly not not a great situation, and it can certainly create that problem yeah. after the fact. Oh, yeah, it's a big problem because the judge, when we went to court, she made the lawyer resign, and and she's not my counsel anymore, and I have a new one now because she's been mine for two years. Mm -hmm. And mediation in October was the first thing we've done in two years. He has sold stock. He has taken money. Let's um, let, we're, we're, we're actually we 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 are on a we're on a live forum. So I'm actually I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in, Billy, just for your own I know for your own protection. You know I don't want you. Yeah, you're you're good. You're good. You're okay. I don't want to I don't want to make you feel silenced. But yeah, we don't want to talk about it here. We always want to be careful that we're not in a confidential forum. And yeah, and it sounds like I yeah. I, and, and I know you've been through that before, but I, yeah, I just, I don't want to add to whatever may have happened by, you just, you just never know, which is why I always, um, you know, I, I think, I think forums are great, but, you know, again, we want to be careful with what we share. And, yeah. And, and, you know, there's, there's one thing I know, and I've heard it from many women is like, well, I have this lawyer, I put all, all of this money down, but they're not doing anything for me. They're not, they're not communicating. They're you know, they're not getting back to me. Lori, what can we do in that situation? If the, if the lawyer's not communicating, getting back yeah, to Yeah, and let's say you put down that four or $5,000 retainer and the lawyer is just not communicating. They're not answering your phone calls or emails. And I'm not saying that, that we're calling every day, but I'm saying, you know, legitimate things, where is my where are we in this process? What What's next? And a month goes by or two months go by. Because yeah. I know so many women are saying, but I put this money down. I don't have that much to put down and give to somebody else. What's a recourse possibly? Um, well, a couple things. And I mean, first of all, just to, to maybe prevent somebody else from being in this situation, when you're in your initial meeting, ask about communication. What's the communication policy? What can I expect? I can tell you for us, we, we give our clients links to, to my schedule, paralegal schedules, associate attorney schedules, so that you can always set something up if something's on your mind. 
But in this particular situation, I would say reaching out to the, the office and saying, I need a meeting and I need to have that as soon as possible. I'm, I'm flexible as to times. Please give me some times so that we can have that meeting either in person or, 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 or by, or by zoom. And I would let the attorney know beforehand that the purpose of the meeting, what the concerns are so that you don't get a, well, I got to think about it and get back to you. Kind of, I'm coming into this meeting because I'm concerned about our communication. I'm concerned about where this case is going. So what, what I want to talk about in this meeting is how can you and I improve communication and what is, what's our strategy for going forward? What are we doing? What's our next step? And on the strategy, your attorney should always be able to tell you next step, what's going on. If somebody can't tell you that again, to me, that's, that's a red flag. And I know the next step might be, I need more information, but that's the next step. This is what I'm doing to get the information. This is how we're going to move forward. If that meeting doesn't go satisfactorily well, then it is a hard decision to make. And I get these calls from people and it breaks my heart. I, I spent all this money, nothing happened. I want to hire another attorney, but I don't have money. The challenge of that is that you might be in a situation where you can't afford to keep going. If that situation is so broken, I mean, if you can get it back on track and sometimes it takes having that meeting, maybe that needs to be a face-to-face -face meeting. Maybe things get back on track and that's how you do it. But if, if you're just not getting what you need out of this, you need to think about, you need to think about that, you know, do, can I borrow money to hire another attorney? I know that's not always ideal, but folks, this is the biggest investment of your life. It really is. Can, can they expect at least some of that being refunded legally? Um, well, I mean, rules may vary, but um, to give you like a broad, broad overview, retainers are refundable unless it says otherwise. Some attorneys will say this is a non-refundable retainer because this is my fee for accepting your case. Different states have different rules about that. Depending on where you are in the case, there may be rules that say, okay, attorney, you said this is non-refundable, but did you really do $5,000 worth of, of value? And also, you know, can, can you all come to some agreement? Maybe it's half, maybe it's some portion. The other thing I would say is I'd like an itemized bill. And in some flat fee cases, attorneys don't do itemized billing, and that might be in your retainer. And in that case, you should at least have an understanding of what's been done. Because, you know, to, to be fair and balanced on this, sometimes more has been done than people realize because we're thinking in terms of, well, did I get a result yet? But sometimes there's a lot of process. The court, you know, again, that court system does not move efficiently. A lot of court processes are inefficient and people and, and attorneys in their, in their offices have to spend a lot of time on it. So it is possible that more time was spent than you realize. Because a lot of people will tell me they did nothing. And it's like, well, did they really do zero? And I mean, that might be the case, but it might also be, I didn't see a result. So right, we, because it's all that background paperwork and all that 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 mm -hmm. other stuff that and the research that has to to, to go on. Right. Yeah. Right. And I know we're coming to a close, but the only other thing I would say real quick is make sure you understand the firm's billing policies too. Because yeah, I mean, are four people looking at an email and they're all billing you? Or are you know, or, or are they doing things differently? So understand know all that before you sign. Just like you want to read a mediation agreement, you want to read a retainer. Yeah. So, so to, to help wrap all of this up, if you know, fear, manipulation, you know what, whatever they say, it's not true. I'm telling you, it's not true. Things can be negotiated. Yes, get your own lawyer, um, especially if the soon to be ex is, is, is putting that manipulation in there. And even in the mediation, also, if you're, your attorney or the mediator is not, I'm going to say, treating you with respect, right? Treating you with your respect and, and um, that you are a very knowledgeable woman and you deserve half or whatever it is by the state laws and all of this other things. If you are uncomfortable, do not sign anything you don't understand or fear or manipulation is is guiding you don't just don't do it 
And I know sometimes it's hard, right? It's the stress and your heart just, you know, anxiety level. But you know what? In the long run, it's going to be better. And, you know, in Billy's case, maybe you do need to find another attorney, right? And, and things can be asked. You can ask, any spouse can ask whatever they want in a divorce. It doesn't mean you're going to get it. And it doesn't mean um, that it's true. Right, Lori? Absolutely. And again, you know, if it's a fair deal, if they're really, if this is really a person of their word who's saying, I really want to be fair with you, then you should have the opportunity to look at everything so that you know, yeah, you're right. You are being fair. This is a good deal. So again, that, that's why that whole don't, don't, don't talk to anybody else can really be a trap. And I, and I know that lawyers, um, I know that people are afraid, well, if I, if I talk to a lawyer, I'm going to have to spend 5,000, 10,000, whatever on a retainer. I'm not saying do that. I'm saying put, put, your, put your investment in a consultation and tell the lawyer, I just, I'm, I'm here for this consultation. My goal is to fully understand my rights. I may or may not hire somebody. I, I'm, not, I'm not even sure, but I want to totally understand it. That would be your next step, not just, oh, okay, well, whatever you say. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Lori, for again joining us. Lori will be on again next month. Um, and I have no idea on the subject. We're going to figure that out, but she always comes up with some wonderful things. Lori's information will be in the group so that you can contact her um, if you, you know, in, are in Colorado or Florida. Um, any other questions, put them in the group. Um, we, we know other lawyers, other attorneys in other states. We let us know which state you're in, um, what you need help with, or what your question is. If it's a general question, we may be able to answer it. If it's going to get more specific to your case, boy, then, then we, you know, we may have to find you an attorney in your area. So we can, we certainly can try and help you with that. Okay. All right. So thank you everyone for joining. Um, I do, I do want to um, also mention that I do have a six month coaching program um, for women that are going through divorce. It's called the Fortress. So if anyone is interested in learning more, just type Fortress in the comments and I will be in touch with you. Billy, it was so good to have you here today. Thank you for your, your question. And Lori, again, thank you for your expertise and knowledge. It is always a pleasure to have you on. Absolutely, Robin. I really enjoyed it. And I'm, I'm looking forward to our next chat. I am too. Thank you, everyone. Bye.